Well, Lee Marsh asks a question, which is totally worth answering. How do you feel about the visual aesthetic of Blade Runner with respect to the visual effects? <clears throat> it's, it's complete. And it might be one of the most complete joinings of a, a, a visual, visual aesthetic style with a visual effects fidelity to that style. I think the cityscape flyovers in Blade Runner are as good as anything that has ever been shot before or since. And I think they're still a gold standard. There have been a bunch of movies uh, in the last 10, 15 years whose visual style approaches, whose visual complexity and completeness approaches that. Weirdly, one of them is the reboot of Total Recall, which I didn't enjoy as a movie per se, but I love the visual styling of that film. And they're completely copying Blade Runner. I mean, they're, they're paying homage, they're tipping their hat in every frame to Blade Runner, and they're doing it really, really well. Um, I think the, 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 the second two Star Wars prequels feel almost like Ralph McQuarrie drawings come to life if you watch them without sound. <laughs> um, but um, there's a way in which those long flyovers of Los Angeles and like the shots of Decker driving down the street and the kids in bicycles riding past flaming garbage cans. The, the, the way the, the flyover shot matches with that street level shot and makes you feel directly like you are experiencing two parts of the same universe is perfectly, perfectly done. I mean, we thought we were working on that with AI. We thought we were working on a Blade Runner with AI. Um, I, I was really hoping. Uh, and while I love the visual effects in AI and I love the visual styling and iconography of AI, it still doesn't come. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't get there. It doesn't get to where Blade Runner was, man. And all of Blade Runner is all. There's no digital whatsoever in Blade Runner. Um, yeah. For the uninitiated, I'd like to just discuss for a second how the shots in Blade Runner were done, the, the city shots in Blade Runner were done. Because nowadays, it's all CG. And it's I won't say it's easy to do in CG, but it's a known set of tasks to do in CG. Doing it well is still really hard. And when you see it done well, even in service of a crappy movie, you should pay your respects to the incredible work that that effects team did. Um, but... Back when Blade Runner was done, there were still a couple of choices on how to do shots like they had in Blade Runner. So if you've got a spinner flying through a cityscape, um, the way industrial light and magic tended to do shots like that back when in the early 80s, uh, they would tend to shoot the, the city as one plate and the car as a second plate, and then they would composite them together. Um, that is one way to do it, and that is uh, ILM was a master of that kind of compositing, which is difficult work, and it's tough to get right, and uh, sometimes you can see the artifacts on it. However, that was one of the ways to do it. The other and more complicated way is to do it what's called in camera. So just for a shot in which a spinner is, say, flying through the frame, and you've got your cityscape in that frame, what they would do is... Uh, let's say the camera's moving and the spinner's moving. So you're seeing a cityscape move and the thing. Well, so you set up the camera on a motion control stand. It's a robotic camera that can go through its motions as many times as you want, rewinding the film each time. And if it's recording the same shot, it's recording the same images on the film and you won't notice any difference. But they don't record the same images on the film. What they do in order to get a proper balance between the lighting and the elements and the smoke and the blinky lights and the rain and all of the different elements that are in the frame is they expose for each of them with a single pass. So they would set up the camera for the camera shot let's say it's got 130 frames, and they shoot 130 frames of the glow behind the buildings. Then they rewind the film, they bring the camera back to zero, and they do a second pass. And this time they're doing the blinky lights on the top of the buildings. Rewind, reset. Now they're doing the rain. Rewind, reset. Now they're doing the fireballs that are coming from the buildings. For those, they may set up a black card in front of the building and expose 
uh, frame by frame footage of fire as they're exposing. And because it's on a black card, they don't see the edges. And because it's only one of honestly, as many as 16 to 20 in-camera passes, getting the blinky lights on the spinner, getting the interior of the spinner, getting the rain mounting off the spinner, getting the blinky lights, all of those things in order to bring them in perfect balance. The camera and effects team rewinds the film and resets the camera as many as, yeah, 16 to 20 times per shot. And when you put all of those elements onto a single piece of film, the result you get is better than any other way to do it, in my opinion. Um, again, that being said, there is CG in the past 10 years that completely competes with that from an aesthetic and depth standpoint. But as far as the marrying of all of that depth with a uh, with a, uh, the visual stylings of a world, phew, it's Blade Runner. Um, Let's see. Uh, oh, um, SP Productions, thanks for all the knowledge and sharing and inspiration. You're welcome. Uh, and SP Productions wants to know, what was my initial reaction to Blade Runner 2049, and has it changed since the movie's release? I really loved it when it came out, and I still really love that film. I just watched it a few weeks ago, apropos of nothing. I was just... Think, you know, sitting in front of my TV thinking about what to watch. And I thought, ah, I'd like to visit this world for a while again. And I watched about three quarters of it. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a humble brag here about the first time I saw Blade Runner. Because, like I said, uh, Norm and Joey and I got to, or was it just, you didn't get to go. Oh, my God, Norm didn't get to go. It was just Joey and me. Joey and I went to Budapest. We spent... Uh, seven days on set with the production team on 2049, and it was stellar. We got to watch some filming part of the Las Vegas uh, scene uh, with Ryan Gosling walking through. <sighs> yeah, we got to see a lot of the sets, a lot of the props. It was great. Uh, and because of that, Alcon, the company that made 2049, invited me uh, to one of the earliest screenings. So I got to see 2049 um in Los Angeles, in Dolby's little tiny theater. I mean, maybe it seats 150 people and maybe there were 15 of us in that theater, 20. It was a really small group. Seeing it in Dolby's, <laughs> Dolby's Dolby Theater, the sound was the best sound I've still ever heard for that film, unless I listened to it on like my Bose headphones while watching my big screen TV. Um, and I was watching it with a bunch of other geeks and uh, influencers and movie critics. And all of us were really moved by how beautiful the film was. I think Denis Villeneuve is, um, I don't want to say an inheritor to Ridley Scott because they're, 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 totally, they're different filmmakers. But there is a way in which Villeneuve creates complete worlds that is very much along the lines that Ridley Scott creates these complete believable worlds to exist in. Um, I only recently rewatched uh, Sicario. I actually watched Sicario twice in the last four months because I love it so much. Um, but also because if you watch Sicario, it's totally clear Villeneuve wanted to make a science fiction movie. Like Sicario is a movie about... <laughs> Uh, it, what is it really about? It's, it, it, I mean, it, it, it's about the moral complexities of uh, 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 being a, an agent, but uh, <clears throat> it's a science fiction movie. It's shot like a science fiction movie. Arrival is also, so we also watched Arrival very recently because I wanted more Denis Villeneuve. Um, I was so sad that they delayed the release of Dune. So I watched the trailer for Dune every few weeks and uh, watch old villain of movies just to get my fix in. Um, and uh, yeah, the, 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 the visual spaces that Denis Villeneuve creates feel like at his best, feel like Ridley Scott's spaces at his best. Thank you guys so much for watching that entire video. If you would like to support Tested even further, well, I'm here to tell you that you could become a member. If you follow the links below, you'll see there are several tiers of membership depending on how much you'd like to pay and how much access you would like to me and the Tested team. And membership comes, as always, 
with some excellent benefits, including uh, questions that I'll answer in live streams. The questions have been so amazing and exclusive videos and exclusive content. Follow the links below and we will see you next time.